programming that we always promise. First, I have from near mint condition, Omar. Omar, how's it going, buddy? It's going okay. And I swear to God, if this works, you're like the new IT guy for Omni Bros. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get this to work? I know you made some kind of deal with the devil or something. I did. Satan is my lap dog. It did, you <laughs> bastard. It did work. All right. Well, watch out, Omar. Omar, Jess is after your job. <laughs> I'm after your job now. <sighs> and from Gabe Infinity Watch, Gabe the Babe. How's it going, Gabe? Why am I getting this weird sense of deja vu? Like, we already did this before. I don't know. Was that all a dream? And yes, Comics Guide good, 101, Luis, Luis, Luis Adis. How's it going, dude? Baba Booey. Baba Booey to you, too. Tonight, we are talking about Global Frequency, a book review, and X-Men Grand Design. So, book review time. And we should lead it off with another plug for the fabulous Who, Gabe? That is the fabulous in-stock trades, everybody. Uh, IST, as we like to call them. InStockTrades.com, where you get uh, up to 50% off a lot of the time on new in-stock comics and trades and omnibus. You get bomb-proof packaging, as Jess likes to refer to it as. And you get some of the best customer service any company will ever give you. IST, everybody. That's right. And don't forget, every quarter there's... Omni Bros live discounts. <laughs> We've already got our first comment from Nick Munoz. Worst episode ever. <laughs> uh, you get uh, free what, shipping. Because on my face was on it the t whole time? That's some cold shit. <laughs> How about most unoriginal comment ever, Nick? <laughs> Since you already said bastard. it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, okay. he, he graduated. Congratulations, Nick. Oh, is his laugh school over with for him now? He's now in debt for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. Right on, man. Congratulations to uh, to Nick Munoz. Esquire. Look, if you're looking for a cheap lawyer in the California area, you got one. Uh, Jess's T-shirt looks like the Joker shirt from The Killing Joke. I'm wearing a Hawaiian shirt. Did he wear a Hawaiian shirt? Yep, he sure did. Oh, yeah. Batgirl, look out. I'm getting ready to cripple you. Uh, that got creepy. <laughs> and then fuck her right in the hole. Whoa! Wow, take it easy. Wait. I didn't say that. It wasn't... <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like... Oh, I mean, take, take pictures of her. That's what I meant. That's what happened in the book. Holy All right. guacamole. So now that we got everybody here, let's right. do the review. Yay. All right. Let's talk about how awesome this book was and how ginormous it is x-man grand design by ed pisker what was it that this guy did hip hop, hip -hop family hip -hop. tree yeah hip hop family tree y'all whatever it was he did i want to buy it because this book was awesome the phenomenal series that if you're into hip hop it covers the different eras Does, so is, is it much like this like starting from beginning to end like yeah, so, year by year up until like 1987 or something like that. This is pretty cool because this starts, you know, it's a story of the Watcher. And I love the oversized format that this book is. Man, the yellow pages yes. to make it look old school. Um, um, uh oh. Uh -oh. Thing with Hip Hop Family Tree. Are we getting, Are we getting um, um, feedback from feedback Louise? From Louise? I'm getting up. Oh. <laughs> he doesn't even come every time anymore. He just signs right <laughs> off and right back on. Like I did he knows, it. He knows the drill. This isn't his first rodeo. This right. was this was a nice surprise because this is something like as an X Men fan, I would have loved to have worked on. Like the the amount of details that he puts into this is the kind of shit that I kept in a notebook when I was in grade school and middle school. Like, oh, this happened in this year. This happened now. Um, so it's pretty cool because it goes through the gathering of the five X-Men. But before that, it starts off with, like, young Professor Xavier and a young Magneto. little disappointed I didn't see, like, Apocalypse or um, m mention of all the older mutants. But that's okay. It's pretty cool. It runs into a young Professor Xavier, like, when he stumbles upon Storm when she was a girl and has his first fight with 
the Shadow King, all this awesome stuff, you know, just happening in a panel or two that you first read about in, like, old school X-Men. But it's done in chronological order, right? Which makes it so different than what most retellings are. It's it's done in the way that Professor Xavier is a baby all the way up until, well, I mean, not to give too much spoilers away, but pretty much the when he's having dreams about the Shi'ar coming down and then Krakoa and all that. So it ends right before Giant Size number one, right where the original X-Men ended with X- X-Men 66, right before it went on hiatus and it became reprints. Now, as a big X-Men fan, I absolutely fucking love this book. I thought it was perfect. It's a wonderful love letter to X-Men, and I cannot recommend it more. It's wonderful. And I love the way that the, the collection is, too. It's, it feels like a hardcover. It's more like a cardboard. And uh, pages are nice and thick. So what, what did you guys think? Since you're not, like, uh, Luis, what did you think? The only problem I had is where the hell could I store this? This thing is huge. Like, it's really, really big. Uh, I have um, Calyx IKEA shelves, and it doesn't fit. Like, it does not fit in the slot, so I have a hard problem. Isn't it the size of an Absolute? It's smaller than no, an it's, Absolute. It's, no, it's larger than an Absolute. It won't fit in the Calyx shelf. Yeah. What? It's yeah. larger than that. It doesn't fit. Look at that shit. Look at that. See? Proof. That's no, Those are not Absolutes. Those are Omnis. Yeah, but I'm able to actually fit the pre yeah, I can fit. I can fit Absolutes into these Calyxes. What? That's crazy. All yeah. right. So it's huge. Where are you going to fit that? I have absolutely no clue. It's right probably- next to fucking Nemo in my Billy shelves. <laughs> there it is. I'm probably just going to have this as kind of like a coffee table book in the living room. It's uh, it's pretty good for that. It always catches somebody's eye. I, I overall love the design of this. You can tell that a lot of work was put into this. And if you've seen Ed Pisker's other work, uh, namely his Hip Hop Family Tree, it has a similar aesthetic to it. It's got kind of like the washed out pages. Uh, it's very big, and overall, it's just a fun read. Uh, Brooks loves Brooks. It doesn't contradict the material, but it just kind of graces over the material of Lost Years. Lost Years is that uh, series written by Byrne and drawn by Byrne that kind of retcon a little bit of things. But yeah, I was a little upset I didn't see Adam X in here. Well, the reason for that is because uh, Ed Piscor was doing a chronological story or of the X-Men up for the first 200 issues. Yeah, so but all no, that stuff no, no. that you didn't you didn't like, see in here happened after those issues. Yeah, but Corsair would have banged that one Shi'ar chick and then had Adam X. Remember, that's how he came about. Right, right, but he didn't really come about in this in the in the series until like you know he's, way he's, was he, the he's been wrecked. Right, he's been retconned out of existence. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, it's only the first 200 issues that this uh, grand design is going to cover. So, what did you think, Gabe? I love it. This is a great book, man. I was reading uh, the singles when it was coming out. And same what everybody else was saying. Uh, Ed Piscor is great. I love uh, Hip Hop Family Tree. I got like the two giants. I like, guess Hip Hop Family Tree stuff is, is the same size as this, basically. And there's a, uh, I have a, a slipcase that has two of them in it. So Hip Hop Family Tree is great. He did a book called uh, WYSIWYG that's all about uh, old school hacking and you know early days of hacking and internet crimes and stuff like that. So he's really, when he gets into something, he's a very prolific, prolific writer. Uh, his art is great. It's weird. A lot of people consider this like an indie looking book. He has a very indie underground style uh, because he originally got his break working with uh, uh, American Splendor artist. I, I keep forgetting the guy's name, the artist in the right. Not the, the Harvey artist, Picar. The yeah. He was uh, he was mentored by Picar. So that's why his art style I can kind of I can kind of see that in his artwork a little yeah. bit. Yeah, that's exactly where that kind of stuff came from. Uh, he's he's a fan of the series. There's like original drawings he did when he was a kid. Oh, I love um, that part. Love yeah, that part. That, and, and not just that, but I remember when I was reading this, I was like, all this really weird, wacky stuff was was in here, like of Professor X's childhood and stuff like that. Oh yeah. And I was like, was this even true? Like, I thought this guy was legit. This sounds like bullshit. And as you get through to the end of the book, there's like a syllabus and like an outline. He shows his homework. He goes. Here's where I found this material was in this issue. Here's where I found this material from that issue. So all all the groundwork for this is laid out. It's great. Um, I think it's one of those things that if you are new to X-Men, I think would be kind of helpful. Right. But I'm also worried it might be a little like 
uh, I'd this be overwhelming. Stuff. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's so much in compact. Um, I love, and I love real quick. I love how he redid all of X Men number one in his art style, with the same coloring techniques he uses and stuff. Oh, did it's he? Great. I thought that was just a reprint of X Men one. That's why no, I didn't no. bother reading it. I think he no, just he recolored, totally recolored it. it. Oh, yeah. he recolored it. Okay. Ah, okay. So I love that his mom pushed him to do art. I think that was great. Like she kept all his artwork. She would draw with him. So this is really cool, man. What Jess, you're the least knowledgeable person in existence. Yeah, well, you said it. Um, what did you think of the book? As far uh, as X Men, I know they're not your favorite, but what did you think? No, I've always had trouble following the X Men. Um and with that in mind, I really like this because it was very easy to follow. Um, since it was in chronological order, I mean, X Men is an intimidating series to dip into. You, uh, you know, I've said it before that anytime I read an X book, I just have to assume this has happened, and otherwise, I can't enjoy it. I, I'm not going to go back to X Men One and start like Riley has done and do a complete read through, or like you've done, uh, Omar. Um, so I, I enjoyed it a lot because it was all in chronological order and it all made sense and it put things into perspective for me. Um, his, his drawing style is, is fine with me. It's a little, you know, it's a little cartoony. Um, I don't know anything about hip hop family tree as I don't, I'm not into hip hop nor family you, trees. So. You could have stopped that. I don't know anything about hip hop. Yeah, I don't family tree on there. Hip nor hop. I know nothing of. Um, you remember that one episode where we had uh, him reading off his uh, daughter's <laughs> playlist? That was on my phone for some reason. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah. And, and don't do that again. Uh, <laughs> but I, I really enjoyed it. I, I thought it was uh, – I read it this afternoon and got a huge kick out of it that it, it, made, a lot, it made a lot more sense to me. I'm going to be able to enjoy X-Men books going forward a lot more from that time period. Yeah, well, that's a good way of putting it. I w I'm curious as to I, what you thought because I was wondering if it helped you or if you were like, I don't understand why they're talking about this one guy and for one panel. Like, who is this Jack of Diamonds? Yeah, I didn't know. What got who to do with Cyclops? I, yeah, I didn't know who he was, but I just said, okay, fine. There's Jack of Diamonds and, you know, like I did with everything. Um, I... Yeah, I, I dug it a lot because it, like I said, it puts things in perspective, and I understand a lot more now uh, since it's chronological, and I don't have to, you know, go back in time to figure it out. So, uh, Gabe, what you were talking about the table of contents, like I think that's what's missing from the collection. That was in the original. Um, Are that only in the originals? Damn it, that sucks. Yeah, maybe they'll reprint them in the second one with the second book whenever they do that. Um, oh, yeah. But, that, but honestly. I, I was okay without it just because I remember most of these most of these stories. There's a couple in here that I'm like, did that really happen? Yeah, yeah I don't exactly. Them, I, they don't, I don't remember them retconning that. But yes, Grand Design. Awesome. Great book. Um, let me just take a second to thank Jimmy Owens publicly because he made it possible through a very generous gesture for me to be able to see Star Trek Discovery – uh, on CBS All Access, and thank you, Jimmy. I've been binging the heck out of it, and it's awesome, and I really appreciate um, what you did for me. Thank you so much. I love Star Trek Discovery, and Jimmy did me a real solid, so thanks, dude. I was waiting for your review of that. That way I could see if I should jump onto it or not. I know you're a diehard Trekkie, so. I am, yeah. I am. Are a, you? Yeah, I am. I am a diehard Trekkie, and that's what was killing me about the fact that it was just another streaming service that I didn't want. And Jimmy Owens gave me the hookup, and I, I watched five episodes yesterday. Today I was doing more reading of comic books, but my wife's out of the house for five days. <laughs> I'm going to be doing nothing but <laughs> pop culture <laughs> junk. I'm going to be playing video games, watching TV, and reading comic books. Mm, dressed like with no pants on. I'm yeah, I was going to no say, it's like on. Tom Cruise from uh, Risky Business. <laughs> right, in my socks and underwear and drinking Crown uh -huh. Royal and Coke. 
Uh, no way, and Jesse's gonna be dressed like Donald Duck, pants on or shirts on, but no pants. <laughs> right, that's my uh, idea of fun. So, global frequency. Uh, mm-hmm. So, before we start with this, I just want to thank our sponsors, In Stock Trades, for providing these review copies for us, uh, both Grand Design and Global Frequency. All right. Oh, real talk- quick, I- wait, Omar, you- Omar, Omar. Hey, did you read the G.I. Joe Transformers? The new... The, no, the but I want to. I want to get the hardcover because this, okay. that's what this reminds me of, this artwork from Grand right. Design. It's done in that kind of art style. Yeah, him and the guy. Yeah, him and the guy that does that, that Transformers book, they're like basically buddy-buddy in the same kind of like circle of friends of like indie artists and stuff like that. So their, their styles are fairly similar. So Oh, so like artsy folks. Gotcha. No, nah, they're not so artsy for you know whatever, man. It's got that retro art. I, I dig it when it when, when it suits the story. Um, so gl- global frequency, Luis. I'll let you start. What, what did you think of global frequency, brother? I like the initial concept of it. It's pretty cool how you have this uh, society that's basically observing everything that's going on all around the world, and how they are. Well, I mean, it's typical Warren Ellis fair. Like, Warren Ellis deals, loves dealing with conspiracy theories and loves dealing with that type of political intrigue and things like that. Overall, it's it's an interesting read. And I really like the design of this. Like, this was a nice little well-put-together hardcover. Uh, not really too many bells and whistles of it. You got scripts in the back, things like that. And a few covers. Yeah. About that, I enjoyed the fact that he had a different artist working yeah. on the issue. That was that was really cool because it made it feel different. Like each story was so different. I mean, it works. It works. You have a different artist for every different issue because it's a different story, pretty much to tell. And um, oh man, there there were some awesome fucking stories in this one. Um, I'm trying to think of was it Lee Hermo told one of my favorite ones. Uh, Jason Pearson drew one of my favorite ones. Oh, I forgot Simon Beasley drew some stuff in here, too. And you can kind of tell his artwork. Yeah, and uh, uh, the late great Steve stuff. Dillon did it this year. Yeah, also. Steve Dillon right here did some stuff. Yeah. He's, his stuff's great. I Every time I see Steve Dillon stuff, it just makes me sadder and sadder. Like when I see Darwin Cook stuff. <laughs> never get yeah. more new stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it I sucks. It was his two-year anniversary since he passed. Has yeah, it been that long? Yeah. Man. Yeah, this is the Lee B. Hedermo artwork I was talking about. Like, this story was okay, but I love his artwork. It's so dark and gritty. Um, What's your favorite, uh, your favorite story? Okay, so I'm going to tell you my, my, my problem with Global Frequency that you guys probably loved about it. Um, I am... I like investing in characters and there were only two characters in this whole series that you could kind of invest in. And that's about it. It's, um, Oh, what are their names? Alf and, uh, Alf Miranda uh, zero, Miranda zero and the operator. Um, uh, whatever she ends up calling her. I can't remember. Warren Ellis in an article on it, but my favorite story is the one where they put the Ebola virus in the, uh, big eye in England. And they get this chick to like practically run this huge triathlon trying to get there. Oh, doing parkour. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's so good. It kept me on the edge of my seat. Like the art isn't the greatest, but man, I just love this story. I thought it was great. I like that every single story had me on the edge of my seat. It was every single story was gripping right up until the end. It was just pulse pounding, go, go, go all the time as they're racing to solve these situations that, that, you know, their, their world, um, they're a secret society that's, I guess, not so secret, but, uh, problem solvers. And I love the creativity of how they went about solving these intractable problems. So that's what I love the most about it. And I loved, <clears throat> as you said, how every different artist makes every single story stand out, um, as it, as it, it works as a whole, but it also works individually. Whereas something like planetary needed to be taken as a whole, but you could just dip into this and read one story and you'd be okay. Um, and I, that's what I really loved about it. And of course yeah. all the Warren Ellis psychic 
sci-fi physics that he has, man. Yeah. This is the story I was talking about. This is uh, Aleph, like when she uh, gets her and recruits her to become her operator. I thought this was a really cool story, but it, it's also like a flash. It's a flashback and a flash forward, like uh, where they go and find where she is. These like six or seven assassins, and they try to get her. Oh, I love this because this is also this is drawn by. Jason Pearson, who draw, doesn't draw that much often anymore because he suffers from a lot of like uh, depression and stuff like that. But the guy is such a great damn artist. He's the guy that did uh, Body Bags or Dark Horse. Never heard of him. Yeah, that. yeah. Great oh, body Bags is pretty cool. Yeah, he's just a great artist. Yeah, he used to do a lot of Deadpool covers recently. Oh, yeah, that's right. He did the Daniel Way uh, crappy Deadpool stories, but he did the covers only. <laughs> I wasn't the biggest fan of his run. Um, Gabe, what did you think of Global Frequency? No, I, I like Global Frequency a lot. It's like an anthology, like you guys were saying. Each uh, issue is its own story. I just love the idea that there's this like connected group of people, of a thousand and one people, who are each like top of the class of their specialty of science or computer science or, or fighting or whatever kind of skill set they have. And they're able to just call these people up and go, hey, you're on the frequency and you're ready to go up next. You know, I just love how that kind of just whole idea worked. Yeah, and usually by page one, you are jumping into the action where they're like, hey, you're oh, yeah. on global frequency. And you're like, okay, because these 1,000, what is it, 1,001 people all over the world are on call, ready to be on global frequency. The thing that I didn't like about it is the thing that I also like about it is that, like you said, it's the anthology aspect of it. So for me, 20 pages isn't enough to dive into these characters. Like, I, cause I really wanted to know more about the crazy shit he was talking about. Like that space station at the end, you know, I, I wanted more of that, but I only got 20 pages of pretty much what it turns out to be good guys versus bad guys. And the good guys win at the end, you know, and I kind of, I wish there was, I wish it was fleshed out more. But that maybe that's just me and wishful thinking. I wish it was a longer series. No, no, I understand that because uh, I understand that, Alex. I know exactly how you feel because that's how I felt about. Uh, did you guys ever watch Quantum Leap? Of course. Yep. Okay, so that's how I felt about Quantum Leap. I love that show. That and the and Mash and Shield are my top three TV shows of all time. Larry, but that's what I like about this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was. So was Andrew Dice Clay and a bunch of other crazy people. Um. Damn it, I forgot what I was saying now. Oh, no, I love it because of just the idea of being able to just call each other up and get the set up. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. You, you took me off track, man. Uh, I'm sorry. No, you. Cool. I was I was complaining about how I didn't like that aspect of it, that I wish it was more oh. fleshed out, that I wish I could have more instead of just the 20 pages. Right, of, right. Of, of, well, that's the, how of these, was. Of these in, well, they're interesting ideas that are just kind of used as a backdrop for the main story. Yeah, and I like how, like you were saying, like by page one, you're in the story. There's no lead up. There's no like yeah, you're introduction like, to the scene, or you know, you know, use most comics that have that captain. I'll say like San Francisco, and you're in this building, and you're talking to so and so. It's just something like, no, we can't do this, and then it cuts to a different scene. And, it's stuff like that. It's 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 automatically gripping. They did a TV show for this. They did it. They shot a pilot for Global Frequency. Really? Because I was thinking it would be episode a good and HBO it went nowhere. Set. Yeah, they shot one one pilot episode and it just never got picked up. You can find it on the internet, but yeah, it's it's out oh. there. There was one episode of Global like the Frequency. Wonder Woman pilot, not worth watching. Yeah, or like the uh, uh, Wolverine Origins before they did all the CGI on it. That was my favorite movie. That you illegally downloaded. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, so for me is definitely a must buy if you're an X-Man fan. And uh, yeah, if you're a fan of Warren Ellis, give this a read. It's a standalone story of 12 issues collected in one hardcover. That is it. Global Frequency is in my top three Warren Ellis books. I love you, Warren Ellis, and I love Global Frequency. Have you read Next Wave? I have not. I've heard that's awesome. Oh, yeah, geez. get ready to oh, move Global geez. Frequency down the list. <laughs> yeah. Next Wave is hilarious. Yeah. If this was like your Netflix 
first queue back in the day, just you need to move that to the top of the queue. Like, that's <laughs> okay, the I know right where it is. I can go grab it off the shelf and read it tonight. If the I whole, didn't already yeah. say Civil War was our next reading assignment, I would uh I would have gone with ne uh next wave. It's such well, a fun book. Should I wait and make and make that our assignment for uh, July? Yeah, why don't we do that? Let's do uh, okay. Civil War May and then uh, or June and then then uh, what's it called? Next wave for July. Okay. Cool. Great. Um. So that's it. That's our reviews of those two books. You guys want to do some hauls or? Why am I acting like I'm still hosting the show? I, like I stop hosting. Like, all the time. <laughs> you got your host voice on and everything. Yeah, yeah, Jess, this is your show. I'm just watching. No, you man, it, you do you. I mean, go for it. It doesn't bother me a bit. I fucked it up early today, man. Uh -huh. <laughs> first, you first you want to take Jess's job as an IT, and now Jess is going to take your job. Yeah, this is this is like bizarro world I'm living in. Yeah. <laughs> Where Jess is like, let me fix what you fucked up. Uh, was that five minute episode just a different dimension episode? Is that what happened? <laughs> it was an in stock trade plug, is what it was. It's, Earth, it's Omni Bros Earth 2 or something. Uh, the question in the chat is we're just going to read the main Civil War story, and that will be June's assignment. We already did May. I think we already did May's assignment, which was what was it? Planetary? Planetary. What's, what's the last one we read? Okay, and just that was actually February's topic. assignment, and we got <laughs> to it in May. We are the worst students ever. <laughs> <laughs> so then, uh, next wave will be like late June, early July, and yeah, but, we're going to do Civil uh, War first. Un unlike uh, Planetary, though, Civil War is a quick read. I mean, it's Mark Miller. It's going to take you like five minutes to look, like read it, and then probably ten minutes to look at the art. That's true. Okay. Uh, so, Halls, wake up, Gabe. What'd you get? Uh, what I got? Let's see. Did you take advantage of Jimmy Chung being at the shop this weekend? Oh, yeah. Those are so No, beautiful. I didn't get anything. Did, yeah. did you feel bad? I didn't get a sketch or anything. Because he was signing things until midnight? Dude, yeah. I felt bad because there was like him and Tyler Kirkham were just backlogged and in, uh, in doing uh, commissions for people. So, But either way, that's awesome. I can't um, believe they're doing commissions for people right there at the shop. That's really yeah, it was like a, a yeah, it was like a remark, and then they would do like a more detailed remark. But it's like it's basically like a chest up commission. They were great, but I missed out. I'll get them later. They'll be back around. Jimmy Chung will be back here for uh, Amazing Las Vegas. I know I'll see him there, and maybe hit him up for it, some artwork then. But anyways, let's talk about halls, right? That's this segment of Omni Bros Live. The first thing I got was this special little baby. Oh, you I bastard. Realize, I didn't realize how cool this was. This is uh, the slipcase hardcover Excess County by Jeff Lemire. But not just that. It is one of the 50, the original, uh, this is 22 out of 50, that was supposed to come with like some kind of like a baseball or, or a hockey card. Hockey like card, yeah. Card. Yeah, but the guy that I bought this from, I guess, didn't have it. I didn't even know this was a part of it. I thought it was just the old, you know, just a signed hardcover that I know was kind of popular and people wanted it and everyone kept telling me it was a good story. I thought that's what this was. I didn't think this was the super, like, San Diego Comic-Con exclusive that came with, like, a card. But either way, I paid 30 bucks for it, so I don't care. It's going to be a cool story, and I'm going to check it out. Wow, $30. That's a steal. Yeah. yeah, 30 bucks for this thing. I am so jealous. I'm not even a big fan of Jeff, Lem Jeff Lemire's artwork. Oh, no? Mm, nope. I know we talked no. about that. No, I don't think we've ever talked about that. That I know really? of. This one's a lot different. It's not like a Show you know, me. Like Sweet Tooth. I know I know. just like Sweet Tooth, and I love Sweet Tooth. Yeah. Um, this isn't uh, quite like that. The artwork is more mainly just lines. Oh, actually, it kind of looks more... Um, Independent. I hate to sound like snobbish, but like independent. That that yeah. page you showed me. So yeah, it, it's that. Um, it, it's more liney work and not so much like ink wash as he usually does on, like his current work, like Trillium, or when he was doing Sweet Tooth, or or anything like that. So it, and plus it's all black and white too. So, um, but yeah, you know, I'm gonna check it out. I like that guy's work a lot, so I'm interested. That's a good one, man. 
And then, let's see. I picked up a uh, the first Incredible Hulk uh, epic collection. Is that Peter David? Yeah, no, no. This is uh, Stan Lee. Stan Lee. Yeah, uh, yeah, so, yeah, it's called Man, Man or Monster. It collects, like, God, like, it's almost like an omnibus. It's like 20, 25, like, issues in here, it looks like. No, I'm lying. One through six, 12. It's about 20 yeah, About a good, you know, 15. Yeah, yeah, it's a good, it's a good, th these things, these epic collections are great. I'm loving these a lot. You get a lot of, lot of comics in here for very cheap. These are like 40 bucks retail. This one's 35. So you get these super cheap on in stock trades, I'm sure. But yeah, this is the first. I, I love the old school Silver Age Marvel work. Um, I can't get the omnibus for this because it's like two hundred dollars or something outrageous like that. So I figured I I still want to read the, the books, so I'll get them through the epic collections. That's the way I've been getting the Hulk books, except for World War Hulk and uh, Planet Hulk. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm an idiot and picked up. Why is that? Pla oh. Pla I, I'm an idiot and I picked up Planet Hulk. I already had the hardcover and I should have kept it instead of getting the Omni. And uh, w the, but I did get uh, the World War Hulk, that omnibus. That one's a lot thicker than the hardcover, original, the original hardcover. Oh yeah, yeah, that has everything in it. Though. All, everything's kind it's of huge. It's almost padded out. Yeah. I, you know, I, I'm really surprised to then go that route with Civil War or House of M. Like those two events that came out were so huge. Yeah. And House of M had those matching like spine hardcovers, and then well, Civil War had something similar, and then they had the Civil War box set. I'd love to read House of M. If it was just all collected, it'd be nice. Yeah, but I don't know how Civil War was. I have I've only read some of them, but most of the House of M stuff had nothing to do with any of the other stuff. Mm -hmm. Even though it's an alternate timeline, like it felt like the Mark Waite Spider Man was a lot different than the Spider Man within the House of M series. Mm -hmm. Everything I've heard about the Civil War ties in, tie ins where you read Wolverine, you read the Captain America one, and you read the Spider Man stuff, and that's about it. Wolverine is the one by Guggenheim, right? Where he basically comes back from a single cell organism? Something like that. Yeah. Nitro or something. Yeah. Yeah. Nitro. Yeah. I, re I remember how much I hated that because I was like, I love Wolverine, but making him into an, like an anime character, like what's his name? Like Cell? from Dragon Ball Z is just ridiculous. <laughs> That's just stupid. Um, yeah, and then that, oh, God, that horrible front, was it Frontline? Where, like, Captain America's in jail, and they're like, you're not a, I can't remember who was questioning him. It was that really annoying reporter uh, from... Uh, Daily Planet? No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> All right, hey, how about I get through my haul? Yeah, <laughs> fuck your haul. Took over this thing. <laughs> <laughs> God, Nobody we're talking about Civil War. When you Nobody cares Civil about your War. shitty haul. All right, go ahead. Oh, you, good? <laughs> you dick. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Punisher Max on the bus. Oh, hell yeah. Up. There we go. There there we go. go. Yep. That's the one everyone's been waiting for. Uh, I love... I mainly bought this. I haven't read all of Punisher Max before. My nipples. Maybe the first couple issues, but everybody keeps talking about how good it is. But what I really like about this is it collects that uh, that Garth Ennis Bourne series he did with uh, Derek Robertson. Mm -hmm. That tells the story of, of Punisher or Frank when he was in Vietnam and all the things he had to, bad stuff he had to do in Vietnam and how he basically almost wished into manifestation the idea of his family being killed so that he had a reason to continue fighting. You find so, out Frank was pretty fucked up before. Yeah. His family died. Yeah, he, yeah. It wasn't his family killing, being murdered. that fucked him up. He was fucked up way before that. And he just using that kind of as an excuse, but yeah, so pick that up. That's great. Um, I can't wait to read this, even though some people think Garth Ennis is trash because he wrote the cross, but I'm in for that. You don't have any more. Um, That's what you like it. You're amoral. And I'm gonna turn this into uh, CGC Bros again, real quick. I got <laughs> back. I got back I, my X Men 25 uh, uh, from my Andy Kubert signing. Got back I, as a 982 signed by Andy Kubert. I I, I am kind of jealous of that. Now now explain to this for people that don't know. Okay. Mainly, pro probably just me. Everybody I'm sure knows this. If you get an autograph on a comic book. 
you have to have it witnessed by somebody that is CGC approved or whatever. Right. right. You have to be anointed by, by CGC. Like it's so there is no way in hell that you could CGC like a um, Jack Kirby signature or a Lane Wayne signature, right? Like you cannot send that off to get CGC because you have no proof that they signed it. Yeah, and if a book is already signed, if it's already been signed and it wasn't witnessed, CGC won't give you that the yellow label. Aren't, aren't you, you a, label. aren't you a certified witnesser? Right, right, right. But I can't just you can't just hand me books that were signed five oh, years ago. Go, oh, okay. oh, oh, but I'm gonna do that, Gabe. That's where we're going with this. You're gonna see like all the Jack Kirby stuff that I've got signed. You were there when you were twelve <laughs> years old. Huh. And we're gonna CGC the fuck years out. Old? I'm not. I'm not Jess. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> All right. What else did you get, man? Right, I know you got so, yeah. so I got that. But if you do have books autographed that you want to get graded, uh, there's another company called CBCS that'll uh, verify and authenticate uh, autographs. How so, much oh. does it cost to get a book uh, slabbed, Gabe? Depends on the book itself. Uh, modern books, anything from 19, I'm going to say, I think it's 1975 to to now is modern and is about with shipping and everything like that back and forth, probably about $40. And then as a book, it's older or more in value uh, dollar amounts, then it changes the whole algorithm. Cause you got to figure out, you know, how much you're going to charge for insurance because it's a $4,000 book and CGC charges you 3% of the market value of that book to grade it, stuff like that. So, oh, whoa, they do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So if you have like an action comics number one that is in pretty pristine condition, <laughs> you're gonna be paying three percent of a million ass. dollars. It'll be a, it'll be a couple thousand dollars to get that kind of thing. Yeah. Holy great. crap! Aren't you a certified CGC inspector? Can me, I mean, yeah, I you, Jess, stuff. and Luis just uh, start our own CGC business? Put okay. CGC out of business. Just throwing There's that. There's like out five there. other companies out there that, that try that, and they're all shit. We should start CGC. saying that we would be shit. We I'm should saying. start CGCing omnibuses. Like we'll be the first company that does that. <laughs> yeah. If you're you picking up and we're just like we're grading like the spine and the glue and I know how good's the binding on it still. Hey, All the dust jacket, it's a nine point two. <laughs> it's trash. Yeah. Fifty dollars not including shipping. Jess and I will sign all the books you want. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, just, just scribble something on a comic, and I'll say I witnessed it. I was like, yeah, that's Todd McFarlane. I saw him do it. That's what I was getting at. And you and your yeah. high morals. <laughs> morals. You're All high. Right. What else did you get? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I uh, Oh, yeah, more <laughs> CGC stuff. So with uh, Frank Miller coming to my, my store next month to do a signing, I had to pick up one of the greatest comics of all time. I'm trying not to get any glare on this. Sorry, it's weird. But I got a 9.8 uh, Dark Knight Returns number one. Damn, Gabe. And what you're going to crack that open and have him sign it? <laughs> well, I'm going to crack both of them open and have them sign them. And I got, I got, I got plans for these books. So I got two 9.8 uh, Dark Knight Returns number one. Mm. I'm going to get Frank Miller to sign and Klaus Jansen. Are you already planning my next birthday party? Right. <laughs> you're planning my next birthday gift. Yeah, sure, yeah, at Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> and now that's going to cost extra because Frank Miller charges for his signature, right? Yeah, yeah, he does charge for his signature. He charges for, like, remarks and, and everything like that. Uh, you know how you bypass that? He's going to be signing at your shop. You're going to be like, hey, Frank, I need you to sign some agreements here. You slide in, like, uh, you know, Dark Knight Returns number one or Batman year one, just underneath all those paperwork that he has to sign. I got you, man. I'll get I get I get signatures for free. We paid a lot of money to get this guy out here, so I think Luis the people who work question. there should be allowed to have a little scribble on our comic book. Luis had a question for you, man. What ask, uh, like, what's the going rate for one of those right now? For like a nine point eight returns. Uh, seven hundred. Is that mm -hmm. right? Wow. Yeah. Shit. What American money? Holy shit! Yeah. Oh, damn. Wow, I should have kept mine. Damn. I, you, I, I hate this show. <laughs> I, I hate you know at one time i was so happy i got rid of my singles and then fucking gabe pulls these up and he's like oh look what i got cgc and i'm like i could have gotten that better condition you're gonna hate me even more when i sell these and i buy a, a high-grade giant size x-men 
I probably will. I Number have one. Oh, you X Men One itself. Ah, uh, that one I'm not too. Uh, Giant size one for sure. What yeah. What else did you get? Did you get anything else, man? Uh, that's it. That's it for me. That's it. Oh no, wait. No, I'm lying. One more. Um, uh, I got oh. this from uh, Brett on the group. This is a a trade paperback. It's pretty worn, but whatever. Um. I needed to have this because this is a profit. If you guys don't know who profit is, profit is another fine creation from Rob Liefeld himself yeah. uh, over at uh, Image, and he had his own Extreme Studios title. Shut up, Omar. No, I just <laughs> remember the story. Fuck. That he, bought, <laughs> he bought Stephen Platt a car yeah. to, to pull him from Marvel Comics. Because remember, at the time, Stephen Platt was drawing Moon Knight, and he yeah. had a very, like, Todd McFarlane kind of art style, and he bought him a what was it a Camaro or something? Oh, to come Cobra or something crazy, yeah. Because look at this guy's artwork, fucking profit. Yep. Because yeah, like you were saying, uh, Stephen Platt, which is one of my man, I man, I love this guy's art when I was a kid. I wanted to be just like him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so this is the great tall. artwork he has. Look at that! Look how badass this motherfucker is, man. I don't want I don't want him pissed off at me. So. <laughs> But this is great stuff. Um, I'm excited to have this. I wish they would do like a complete series of this. This only collects the first seven uh, issues of the first season or first series. There's two series all together. It's about less than 20 issues. Plus the Brian, uh, the Brandon Graham saga that came out just recently. That was which really, really, really great. That, that was, was awesome. I wish they would just collect all that shit together. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm honestly surprised they haven't collected that. The is semi reboot of profit? Well, it's not. It's not really rebooted. It ties in, but that stuff was. It, 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 yeah, it's it, it continues the story. It's weird because well, not really, but they rebooted, but they continued the numbering. You know, they didn't pull like a Marvel or a DC and renumber it. They just continued the numbering, the whole new like universe and storyline and everything like that. And the art was. Um, yeah, it's good stuff, man. I loved it. But that's it for me, guys. Who's up next? Hey. I got two Yay. things. Um, These nuts? Oh. Uh, <laughs> no. These are big. So I got... <laughs> this is something I've wanted for a while. I can't believe I didn't know. And this is Punk Rock Jesus. I haven't even opened it yet. But I got it at Half Price Books um, during Free Comic Book Day. And so it was like 40% off of that price. So I think I only paid $12 for it. Nice. Damn good. I have never read. That. Have you guys ever read this? Hell yeah! I yeah. Love no, no, yeah. I haven't. No, I, I'm a big fan of his artwork, so I didn't know about his writing because the only other thing I read was like issue one or two of uh, issue one and two of uh, White Knight, and they were pretty solid. So I didn't know how this was. So I'm excited to read this for the first time. And then I got uh, volume one of the She Hulk book. Um, Ooh. so very excited. This is the one by Mariko Tamaki. And I'm excited to read this because I've heard a lot of good things about it. So, it's, you know, she's great. I think this takes place after the Charles Soul run, if I'm not mistaken. I like the Charles Soul stuff. Yeah, I I like that better than I did uh, the Dan Slot, which I know people love Dan Slot's run, but I found Dan Slot's run to be kind of a hassle to just read through some of those issues. I don't know what it was. Because I like the John Burns run on uh, She-Hulk. There's not a lot of She-Hulk in this issue, just flipping through it. Um, and I was a big fan of Charles Soule's. But yeah, Dan Slott's for some reason. I don't know. I just couldn't get into. And just a little bit of Peter David's. Yeah, I'm not seeing much She-Hulk in here. Just flipping through here. Just in the covers. Hmm. But anyway, I got those two books. And that's it. Jess, did you get anything? Uh, yeah, I haven't got last week's order uh, from IST yet, but I did get, I haven't uh, talked about the previous week's haul. I got good choice. Ooh. Weapon X. The return of. So I got that. You know what that one should be called? Weapon X, the death of maggot. <laughs> oh, that's fucked up. <laughs> he, he dies in like issue five, I think. Five or six. That's, that's why I don't want to buy that book. The you sadness of Gabe. To, you definitely want to yeah. buy because you're the only one that cares. <laughs> and I got Wolverine Goes to Hell, which I think is the greatest title ever. Um, so now I'm going to have to read both uh, Jason Aaron Omnis. Fortunately, I have the first Omni, and the Omni's out of print, and the first two complete collections are out of print. So it's you're in trouble if you want to read Jason Aaron 
Wolverine. Um, Leave it to Marvel. Right. And I got Suicide, Suicide Squad number two deluxe, which I don't recommend to anybody except me. I picked it up as well. Of I'm an course, idiot. good for you. I'm an idiot. Yep. Yeah, it's it's not it's good. Not, it's, not, it's, not even Jim, it's not even Jim Lee. It's like John Romita Jr. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know. It's just got Harley in it, and I'm a sucker for that. So I freely admit that it's not a good book, and I'm stupid. So I freely admit that Jess is stupid, and I bought it based on that. Yeah. Good. Well, I got back at you then for your Justice League of America, <laughs> you hook. Wow. Wow. Er, you forgot the er at the end. <laughs> Han Solo. Um, Riley recommended. This was a recommendation. Han Solo. The right. Marvel OHC. So wow. I've actually got a lot of Star Wars OHCs that I got to read. Uh, I loved Generations. I loved all those stories. So I had them digitally. So I decided I wanted them. Uh, in OHC form. How much was that collection? It was fifty dollars, and I think I got it. Uh, well, I waited. It wasn't a first day fifty percent off, so I got it for forty two percent off, forty four percent off. Yeah, I read the all new Wolverine and Wolverine and uh, Jean Grey ones. They were pretty good. I really liked them all. <clears throat> yeah. Um, question is: Is this by Marjorie Liu, the Han Solo book? Yes, it is. Oh, she's a good writer. She's a dom good writer. Then in the admin chat, Sherlock and Riley constantly talk about Agents of Atlas. Yeah, good choice. It's a great yeah. book. They love this book, and I couldn't wait to get it. I I know nothing about it. This is uh, this is a complete blind buy because. Um, that's how I do it. I just wait for other people to tell me what to buy. So there should be two of those, right? Because I think I'm looking at my Atlas collections. I only see five volumes. Um, this says one on it, so okay. so maybe they'll have two. Yeah. yeah, you made a good choice, man. Jeff Parker's Atlas is awesome. Yeah, that uh, ba after I read all the Red Hulk by Jeff Parker, I'm a huge Jeff Parker fan now. Um, and one of my favorites from the '90s. I can't wait to reread these. Milk and cheese. Oh. Dairy products oh. gone bad. Yeah. I thought it was gonna be night. I thought it was gonna be nightfall, Jess. You you fooled me on that. <laughs> you said it was your favorite nineties. Right. I love milk and cheese. These guys are Evan Dorkin's greatest creations next to Eltingville. Um, I love them. <laughs> um, and then I got how many volumes of this? I got Hillbilly by Eric Powell. Volumes one and two. Wanted to read this. This is set in the Goon universe, I believe. Oh, cool. Yeah. So it's written and drawn by him, which isn't great. Um, then I got a book Lu Luis and I talked about Coyotes. Hey. Yeah. This is a. a I, we really like the. Um, we we liked the uh, storyline in it. And it, it sounded like a really excellent and interesting take on what werewolves or um, wolves in general. So I love the covers on it. Oh yeah, werewolves stalking stalking the border and picking women off one by one. Thirteen year old girl with a katana blade <laughs> at a mission. Murder the werewolves stalking the border and picking women off one by one. Uh yeah. That's why Luis and I liked it. It sounded <laughs> awesome. Oh, that kind of coyote. Yeah. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. Huh, that sounds cool. And then Nick Munoz recommended, and I can't wait to read these, Rock Candy Mountain, all about uh, hobos and um, trying to, let's see, come along and ride the rails with the mysterious, mysterious, good word, Unbeatable Hobo Jackson, plus his sidekick <laughs> Pomona Slim, on his quest to find the mythical Hobo Heaven. But watch out for the devil and the FBI and the Hobo Mafia, too. So this, I mean, Nick Munoz really raved about it and can't think of the guy's name in the um, omnibus group, but he's the one that really got everybody started on this. And, Why are you more? Uh, no, it wasn't. Oh. Um I don't know if Nick's still in the chat, but um, it, it'll come to me. But um, 
these are supposed to be great. I'm really excited to have these. And uh, I did not get any CGC books this week. Um, but I did get volume three of Herbie Popnecker. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> have you read any of those yet? Not yet. I'm going to, though. I, oh, my gosh. Yeah. I have them right here on my to read pile on my table. So they yeah. really they really could be the worst things you've ever bought. I I don't know. They're Alan Moore's favorite books. I don't I know. Did uh, did Omar tell you to buy them? <laughs> no. <laughs> then it won't I, be the most horrible I, thing you've ever bought. I have not made him pour root beer on anything I've told him to buy. <laughs> um uh, Yavash wants to know what the interior art's like on coyotes. And coyotes is the term uh, for uh, people that cross the border, right? For people that bring... Uh, that, brings my, that bring my people over. That bring Gabe's people over. So coyotes are the leaders that bring the immigrants over across the border? They're the guys that have the really big U-Haul trucks that they just stuff like 50 oh, uh, family members into. And they let them just kind of just sweat until they die before they cross the border. Hmm. Yeah. Most of the time, that's what happens. Yeah. Or when they get over here, their family already paid a, uh, a huge amount of money to get them over here. And then when they do come over, the coyote then charge their family even more money to let them off, you know, the truck or they go into like indentured servitment and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So here's what uh sorry morning. to bring it all down <laughs> you're a buzzkill <laughs> holy shit this is the comic book that i'm reading about werewolves and the coyotes um J jimmy owens asks if i've read copperhead uh if i got it i did get it but it hasn't come in yet i plan on reading that as soon as possible alan moore is mentally unstable though jess i am too so it'll work out <laughs> for herbie we we are uh, both equally bearded insane people you did right, Watchman. <laughs> uh, so that's my haul. All right. Anybody else haul? Mm -hmm. Luis? Uh, you know, I never really haul. Um, but I did read. What did you read? I did catch up on some Southern Bastards. Mm. I need to pick those up. Southern How is that serious? Uh, Southern Bastards is phenomenal. I absolutely love Southern Bastards. This last arc, which just which just concluded last week, is great. I will say it, it ended in a way I did not expect it to end. Um, it's uh, Jason Aaron, right? Jason Aaron and Jason Latour on art. Oh. Uh, basically set in Craw County, and the story starts out that this old man is coming back because he has some unfinished business, and he decides to clean up the town. It has one of the most shocking endings to a first trade i think i've ever read totally agree with that it's, it's okay. one of those shocking it's one of those that leaves you with your jaw on the floor and leaves you thinking where the hell are they gonna go with this story next um but it he just keeps building on it and he, it keeps paying off and it keeps getting better and better this last arc was i still say the first arc was the best simply because of how shocking that ending was but out of the three arc no it's four arcs at this point with this last one. And of the four arcs that have come out, because this will be the fourth trade, I think this is, if not as good as the first one, really close to it. A lot of stuff that they've been building up ends up paying off in this most recent arc, and it's really good. <clears throat> uh, also read the first two issues of White Knight. Yeah, I read those. Um, those are pretty solid. I like them. Yeah, yeah, I'm in the same camp as you. I'm not completely head over heels in love with it just yet. I think it's okay. I think it's pretty good so far. Sean Murphy going on Twitter though saying this is going to be the new Dark Knight Returns or whatever it is. I'm like, come he said on. That? Yeah, he blasted it all over like his social media saying this is my Dark Knight Returns and stuff like that. And I'm like, all right, man, that's a real high bar to set, but. <laughs> Nah, it's not quite there. It is good, though. It's very solid. You know, Sean Murphy's art, fantastic. From what I've read so far, I still think Punk Rock Jesus is better. Uh, granted, I've only read two issues in. I do like the premise, though. The whole premise of basically 
Joker has now been refined and he is now basically cleaning up Gotham in his own way. He's through certain circumstances that I won't spoil here. He is now basically suing Batman and he's cleaned up his act entirely. I like I like what they do with the character of Harley. Again, I'm trying to be very vague. I like what they do with the character of Harley Quinn and the concept that Sean Murphy introduces. I think that was really cool. And I'm interested to see where it goes. I mean, it's got me. It's definitely got its hooks on me, and I want to finish it. But eh, I think it might have been a bit over hype for me because I know a lot of people in the group and in the chat were saying, "Oh, it's fantastic! It's incredible!" and stuff like that. I'm like, "Yeah, so far it's pretty good. We'll see." You know, I, think, I, I think it's pretty good as well because um, I always take uh, artists that start writing their own stories with a grain of salt. <laughs> like, you know, some of them are mm-hmm. great, and then some of them are not so great. Like. Brian Hitch. Um, but then there's others that I'm like, oh, that's actually, you know, guys can actually draw and write. That's awesome. No, he's, he's he definitely, he can write. No, he, he can draw and write. Um, I'm in it for the artwork, and this is going to sound silly, but the uh, take on characters. Like, I like I like alternate take on characters. I'm still a sucker for that stupid. And this is basically, this is basically a really good Elseworld story. The, El, the Elseworlds label isn't on it, but it should be. Yeah. This is set in pretty much its own continuity. Like, there's, um, there's pretty much nothing tying this in to the main DC Rebirth stuff. You jump into this and you'd be perfectly fine. I do like the, uh, what he, it was some of the, like you mentioned, some of the, way he creates character designs there's his version of the scarecrow i love the design oh, yeah. i really think that's a cool design that he's got going on there um what they do with clayface i was like that is really really cool i never thought of using clayface in that manner before and i don't know if you know what i'm talking about i've only seen the oh i've only read the first two issues i can't remember clayface though Clayface is in there, and well, he's in the ending of the second issue. Okay, well, maybe I didn't finish it. Yeah. Um, because I st- I um, I did some catching up on some reading too. Like, I, well, besides Global Frequency and X Men Grand Design, caught up on uh, the countdown uh, to Infinity Wars that's happening right now, and that's pretty f- that's pretty cool. I can see why they th- people are saying it's a continuation of uh, what's his name's Guardians of the Galaxy run. And oh, I read, yeah. Yeah. Did you guys read? Did any of you all read the new Avengers by Jason Aaron? No. Nope. Nope. She one just dropped. It was. I want to say I'm a little disappointed in it, and maybe I'm jumping the gun because 90% of it was set up, and about 10% is actual story. So it's kind of hard. You know, it's kind of a hard sell. It's also a five dollar book too. That. Um, <laughs> good lord. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that, yeah, that's that's all I read. Was that everything you read, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty much everything I've read this week. Here's a question for Biggie Cheese: How does the Deadpool movie hold up today, in your guys' view? I watched it last, no, like two nights ago while I was working on stuff. I that still holds up. It's still funny as hell. I agree. I watched it with my daughter last month. She had. I don't think she'd seen a Marvel movie before, and now she wants to see all the Marvel movies. She loved Deadpool, and I'm going to take her to see Deadpool 2, and I think it holds up really well. Sure. I could see it again and be happy. That was her first Marvel movie was Deadpool? <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> I don't well, even know how we came to that. Uh, she's going to be in for a surprise when nobody else is throwing the F-bombs around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what? Wait, what? what? Thor is not getting fucked in the butt by his girlfriend? <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter and I crossed a line a long time ago, so our rated <laughs> was no, nothing. That's awesome. <laughs> sounds like a story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there's a difference when the guy raises the daughter and, and, and the woman doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> when you're a Mr. Mom, things turn out a little differently. That's cool. <laughs> My no, neighbor no. has no clue how to fucking mow the lawn. He goes for 10 feet, then shuts it off, restarts it. I may go down and salt for his salt and not did me Owens. <laughs> oh, man. It's not like I got myself a side job. I can go there and cut some grass. Uh, that's a racist stereotype. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, no, but I think Deadpool still holds up. I mean, what's it? It's only been like a year and a half, maybe, maybe two years. Yeah, two, two years, I think. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I mean, I don't think there's been much time for it to not or for it to become not as funny anymore. But I think it's one of those movies that the jokes on in it are legitimately funny jokes. They're not mm-hmm. all pop pop culture references to today because it's always weird when you see. You see movies like even like you can watch like the old like Looney Tunes and they, they have old 1950s like celebrity jokes and, and references and stuff like that. So that's what I like about Deadpool is these jokes will last for a while. I think there's you know there's no there's nothing dating it. So besides Wham, <laughs> there, I mean besides. there are a couple of jokes that like um, you know poking fun at other superhero genre. Movie. Yeah, I mean, a lot of their promotion is like that, especially right now they they were poking fun at like the Thanos. Spoiler letter and stuff like that. So, I thought that was funny. I thought it was unoriginal. I think you're on original. Whoops. Uh, sorry. <laughs> wow. That's the water talking. Yikes. Yikes. That's the water talking. <laughs> Come on, my lawn. <laughs> wow. Un American. Uh, Living in Kentucky, man. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Dad yeah. used to order us porn. Jimmy Owens classing up the chat. <laughs> <laughs> My dad had a stash that he kept locked away. And let me tell you, I learned at a very young age how to lockpick <laughs> at a very young age. Man, my dad, look, he had a lock on his porn. I'm and you sure, figured now, out now you're breaking into lot? liquor stores. <laughs> I'm just glad, you know, he like breaking into cars. He kind of he was into semi normal stuff. Every once in a while, I'd find a video. I'm like, "Oh, Dad, no! What are you thinking?" Oh, is that Mom? No, none of that. Oh. God. <laughs> uh, Luis is back. What happened, dude? I have no clue. Oh, I, it okay. was weird. I was trying to sign back in, and it wouldn't let me. So I was just being a pain in the ass. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> What were we talking about? I came back and all uh, I know is Omar finding it. porn with his mom in it. That's nope. what I thought it was. That did not happen at all. We were taking questions from the chat. <laughs> about Omar. I came back, I came back and all, all I know is that Omar's talking about stuff that his dad used to watch or something. I did. Hmm. How much did each of you have to chip in to send Jess the night computer classes? Use an IT master. <laughs> He's an IT master, it seems. Uh, he went to the Google school of IT. The community oh, colleges. No, 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 no. Virginia. That's where you get it wrong. Most libraries now, they offer senior citizen programs. Oh, Please. shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's not nice. Come on, guys. Leave just alone. God. At least he's, you know, he knows he's Y2K compliant. That's all that matters. That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Quick study, man. I figured it out. I'm sure Jess has a whole wing, like in like named after him at some libraries. <laughs> <laughs> the Bragg Collection. But you know what? No, going back to the conversation of porn. Oh, <laughs> there it is. Yep. What? Uh, now with the uh, with today with the internet and phones, you don't ever have to pay for porn. You just watch the same you know five minute clip over and over again. Five minutes, man. It's like three minutes too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are you sticking around for the story or something? Yeah, what are you doing, man? I, I like it when they when they kiss at the end. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, 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 no. Let, let me see. Let well, me that, see where that the, explains a lot. <laughs> it's just it's just five minutes and it's about behind the sack shots. <laughs> it was like, let me see where this plumber is going with this. Yeah. I think he might have said. Wait, wait, he, did he ever deliver that pizza? <laughs> <laughs> Extra anchovies. <laughs> for those who get that reference. I actually remember the first time I found my dad's porn stash. <clears throat> what, about, what about you, Jess? Did you remember? Do I remember my dad's porn stash? Yeah. Was it like on a, <laughs> one of those, uh, I don't know. I had a, called, like a, not a projector screen, but like <laughs> an eight millimeter, <laughs> eight millimeter. Uh, yeah. Like, and like, 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 no, like, like cage there's, movie eight millimeter. There's no sound. There's only captions. <laughs> like, right. give, it, give it to me, hard. <laughs> and he has to he has to order a piano player to come over and play the music. <laughs> <laughs> he did have um, I I for years 
starting when I was about 12 in our, in the storage part of our house, he had a trunk uh, from the Korean war that had uh, a lock on it. And as far as I could tell, nothing, there were no fingerprints in the dust or anything. It looked like it had just been left there forever. So I hunted for three years for the keys in the storage room and I finally <laughs> found them. Um, and I, opened it and it was had a ton of stuff on top of it so i could only get the lid up a little bit and i stuck my hand in and i pulled out whatever i could and it it was what passed for girly magazines in like the 40s and 50s so it was just you know shots of chicks in bikinis and lingerie and stuff like that hmm. um I ended up actually inheriting it and selling it for a lot and buying Silver Age comics with it because some Ooh, of it. Was, there you go. Some of it was uh, original Betty Page stuff. Um, if you Ooh. know who Betty Page is, uh -huh. uh, yeah, she was a very uh, lovely. Lady. Yes, a lot of it was uh, original stuff of hers, and I remember through Comics Buyer's Guide back in the '90s, I sold a ton of Betty Page stuff to this Betty Page collector who put an ad in Comics Buyer's Guide, and I turned it into Perfect. Silver Age Comics. That's awesome. So there you when go. It was like magazines where they were like, oh, look at her ankle. She's being a floor, just showing her ankle a little bit. <laughs> Not quite. They weren't back to 1910. They were like oh, 1950s, okay. 1950s magazines. You were uh, finding porn like in the woods or like on a railroad track? Uh, I had a friend that found Playboys in the woods. Everybody seems to have like my age seems to have a finding a box of playboys in the woods story. We, I don't we know did, what it is. We did when I was a kid. We found a stash. Yeah. I found a stash on the uh, train tracks behind my house. It was my, ours was out in the woods, like behind our house, about, a, about <laughs> like half a mile from our house. Yeah. See, that's what this, like this generation's going to miss. Nobody's going to find porn stashes anymore. Everybody uh, has like, uh, you know, that's true. the cell phones now or, I'm reading. I'm reading Chase Joe's post. My dad was yeah, like, a nobody ever like to just open up those old bullet boxes full of dirt and dirty old magazines. Oh man! <laughs> Some in the ceiling tiles in the basement. That's, <laughs> that's pretty. That's pretty. That's pretty ingenious, actually. <laughs> that is really ingenious. Yeah, we're, really, we're like Batman when we had our porn. You got to pull off that one like. That one candlestick holder to make the door turn around. That's where all your porn collection is. <laughs> He's got it way too easy. I remember having him like look at those scrambled channels as a kid and maybe I see oh, yeah, a yeah. thing. I think I see something. Oh, that's right. Scrambled channels. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I remember those days. Like just adju adjusting the damn rabbit ears. You're like, I think that's a titty. Uh it <laughs> it probably isn't. <laughs> You remember going to the, mov the movies with your parents and like a titty comes up and they're like, look at the floor, look at the floor. And they cover your face. <laughs> yeah. No, my dad used to make me watch it. Oh. Yeah, he was that kind of a dad. He's like, just watch it. I'm like, okay. Just watch it. <laughs> like, is, that right. is that Pee Wee Herman over there jacking off? <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do these guys have like Godzilla gloves? Like on that Warren Ellis book? Uh, that was a nice trip down memory lane. <laughs> can, you get your, can you get your porn CGC? Yeah, yeah, we've uh, we've done uh, Playboys before for people. Like Playboy number one. Really? Yeah. Cool. Chase, two of my first titties were the mutant ones from Total Recall. Oh my yes. god, that I was three titties, that. and I still it still never looked that ever again. <laughs> and he's like, that was a man, high you, bar. I was a made, high bar. You make me wish I had three hands. I remember that <laughs> line. You're doing fine with two, baby. <laughs> <laughs> <You're doing fine. laughs> what a classic i can't remember the first time uh damn i'm, I'm trying to remember no what. i remember it was a movie called uh just one of the guys oh man she yeah. and it was, a, it was about a girl yeah. yeah dude she has she shot some massive fun bags on her how does she pass for a guy <laughs> like that i don't know dude because she was oh, way yeah. pretty too like she's really a pretty girl was that Amanda Bynes? 
No, what? Dude, no, this, this is like, like this is the 80s. Yeah, that was like 20 years before Amanda Bynes was even born. Oh, okay. And my follow-up question, how do you know who Amanda Bynes is? Because <laughs> I got to die. Okay. Yeah, okay. No, no. Uh, Gabe, Amanda Bynes is unstable right now. That's, that's fine. That's what kind of women Even, even hotter. <laughs> even hotter. Dysfunctional. Yeah, daddy, daddy. yeah just one of the guys. <laughs> Just one of the guys, yeah. Well, most people say uh, 80, 85, 85, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, it came out a year, I think a year after Karate Kid. Well, most yeah, it was 85. People, well, most the bad guy from Karate Kid was in that. Did you see Oh, really? Him? Johnny was? Yeah, he was Oh, dude, Cobra guy. Kai is so good. Cobra is Kai it? is so good. I've been wanting to watch it. It's great, dude. Is it really? Dude, get, get YouTube Red just, just to watch that. I wanted like, to get the free month or whatever. It looks so yeah. cheesy, and Karate Kid is like one of my favorite movies ever. Oh, dude, the, you just li- the nostalgia is going to bite you in the ass because this stuff is great. I love the fact that they play into the whole Daniel son was actually a dick. And- yeah, where they did the whole illegal kick like, reference yeah. and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, well, the first two episodes yeah. are free, and then they charge you for the rest of the series. Yeah, yeah. It's great, though, man. Like My wife and I just like, you know, we, we binged that shit. It was great. And then we just kept talking about it. Karate Kid. One of my top twenty. And they're doing a uh, a second season too. That was There's a second season already. Holy yeah, they've yeah. Those, yeah. yeah. Holy crap, man! I I am I am missing out. I mean, I guess I need to catch up. I I, I watched Westworld, caught up on that, and my daughter and I watched uh, with my with my wife Lost in Space, and that oh, was how was that? I ended up really liking it. I think it's uh, it's good mix of cheesy and good sci fi fun. Has a lot you of heart know, too. You want to know something? It's kind of my confession. I started Westworld season one. I still haven't finished it because it bored the shit out of me. Oh, through. dude! I will tell you this: Westworld season one, episode one, is, is a solid start. You gotta kind of push yourself through like episodes two through seven. Then there's a revelation in seven and eight. By yeah. the time you get to ten, you're like, oh man, this is one of the best shows ever. It's mm-hmm. uh, Ed Brubaker is one of the producers on that show, and he's one of the head writers. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's Chris, uh, Christopher Nolan's brother works on it, but I got halfway through it and I was like, "This is boring the absolute shit out of me." It, 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 I can see a lot of slow, like it, it's done in an old school way of shooting, yeah. and a lot of those mid episodes are kind of boring. And same for season two, but episode four was awesome. I'm not gonna say much, mm-hmm. but holy shit, that was like one of the best episodes of Westworld. Should I watch Westworld or Lost in Space first? Uh, you should watch Westworld. The Wire. Westworld. The Wire. The <laughs> Wire. <laughs> Where is Matt Miranda for The Wire? One of the greatest shows ever that I cannot believe you did not watch. <laughs> no, I haven't seen it. You should watch Shield. Not Agents of Shield. Shield. Shield is awesome. I, I like that way better than The Wire. Watch oh, that's, Oz. Yeah, that's what most uh, most women's w- women say that would agree with you. That uh, <laughs> Shield's better than The Wire. <laughs> Why, 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 do, you, do you think women have inferior taste in, in TV shows because they're women? Oh, no, not at all. I was not, not saying that uh-huh. at all. Just saying that okay. in the category. <laughs> Maybe I am saying that. <laughs> kind of sexist there, Omar. Yeah. Man. Uh, I can't, I, Hashtag me too, Omar. Yeah, man. Whoa, we, you can't use tags like that. <laughs> Open words in my mouth. <laughs> Maybe we should change the name from Omnibros to Omnibodies. <laughs> no, no, none of that. Uh, no, but, but I stand by my statement. I think um, uh, The Wire is a phenomenal show, and Shield was uh, like, um, it was okay. That's the guy that did uh, Sons of Anarchy, wasn't it? Right. Like he went on to do that show. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and a lot of the same people like crossed over. And Sons of Anarchy was pretty good. Uh, it just went on way too long. How about Deadwood? The chat is talking about Deadwood right now. But you I should see it. Oh, yeah. Phenomenal. Except, you know. You there's prepare, Niagara for that. Prepare your heart broken in season three when you find out, oh, there's no more episodes. Yeah, but they're coming back. They, they've they been saying they're coming back for a yeah, while. Yeah, they've been, they've been saying that for like 10 years now. Yeah. They're working on a movie. The last thing <laughs> real, I heard. Real is- quick, uh, Chase Cho in the chat. Chase Chill in the chat. Uh, Elizabeth Shue is not in Cobra Kai, unfortunately. Oh, I'm done. I don't need to watch it. I need Allie. Just, Allie, 
just watch uh, Adventures in Babysitting, where they keep calling Thor a fag. <laughs> I remember that. And actually, it turns out Thor is Kingpin now. Yep. yep. Pretty cool. It's all tied into Man, the Marvel she Universe. She was so hot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she was. Man. Mm-hmm. That, uh, that beach scene. Of course, I almost had a thing for Robin Lively, too. She was the thir- like in the third movie. Uh, I have no clue who any of these people are. It, there was this period of time where classical, like some of the best movies ever made mm-hmm. in the 80s. <laughs> yeah, all the 80s action movies, like Steven Seagal films. All the canon films. Oh, yeah. Hey, I love canon films. Do you? Okay. Oh. Yeah. Like Superman 4 and He-Man, Masters of the Universe. Damn right. Over Super the top. Man 4. Yeah. Hey, over the top okay, combines okay. over the top combines truck driving, the drama of a custody <laughs> battle with the action of arm wrestling. <laughs> Every single one of those fuckers in that movie glistens like a glazed donut on Blu-ray. It looks fantastic. <laughs> well, maybe you should go watch uh, Lost Boys with that sexy saxophone player scene. Dude, I love Lost Boys. That movie's <laughs> brilliant. Had like two guys that the guys that wrote it had no idea about comic books because that scene at the I know I'm not the only one that that scene at the comic book shop does not piss oh, off. Oh yeah, and when they're totally misquoting comic books, and I'm like, that's not accurate at all. Mm-hmm. But I kept quiet amongst my normal friends. I, I'm always looking at the background to see what covers are back there. Yeah. Yeah. What did no, I'm curious? I keep forgetting. What did Canon Films produce? What else did they put out? American uh, Ninja, Missing oh, in Action, uh, one, two, yeah. and three. No, uh, they're Missing in Action three and four, or something weird like that. I think they even no, no, it was one, two. It was one, two, and three. Or and was it Death Wish? They they released two before they released Missing in Action one. It yeah. was such a fucked up studio. Um, what was Breaking it? Two? They put out Breaking Two. There's a, yeah, yeah. Invasion There's a whole US, documentary about Invasion USA. That. that documentary is brilliant. Yeah. What's the documentary? On Canon Films. On Netflix. Yeah, it should be on Netflix still. Oh yeah, they put out Cobra. I forgot about that. Bloodsport. Yeah, Cobra's great, dude. Cobra's fucking awesome. He eats That's his the part where he's like the guy shooting up like the uh, the grocery store. And he just walks away. He's like, are you going to do anything about this? I'll fuck this place up. He goes, I don't shop here anyways. I don't care. <laughs> Stuff like that. Just cheesy 80s dialogue. Oh, I love those great movies, man. They put Just- out Samurai Cop. It's called Katana. It's Japanese for sword. I just saw <laughs> Samurai Cop. Uh, That's one of tracks. the best, worst movies ever. Samurai Cop? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, God. It was so great. It was so awful. <laughs> It wasn't the room it. awful, but it was. Oh my gosh, it was awful. Punisher, thank you, Omnipool. They did Punisher, remember with the uh, Dolph, Dolph Lundgren. Lundgren? Yeah. It actually, I think uh, I'm probably gonna lose all my credibility. Not that. Don't play it, Omar. Don't. Oh, you're gonna ruin all. Of I credibility. think that's my favorite Punisher movie. <laughs> I I I I appreciate the uh, the one with what's his name Thomas Jane that kind of did like a Welcome Frank kind of story, but. Uh, I love that one. No man, I'm a Dolph longer and kind of punch. No man, it's all about Warzone, where that guy gets uh, a missile <laughs> shot at him in mid flip in the air. I haven't even seen that one. I remember watching that with you, and the look on your face was fantastic. Yeah, right? dude, I had to, I had to get out of my chair, and run, run around the room. I was so nuts. <laughs> oh man, can I put on some good shit? I keep forgetting. Um, let's see. Invaders from Mars, Death Wish. <clears throat> yeah, they had a they had a Chuck pile. What was called the Chuck pile back then, where Thanks, every Jimmy. film, e- every film would have to go through and be screened by Chuck Norris's and Charles Bronson's, uh, uh, whatever it was like their agents, what do you, what do you huh? Agents. Yeah, they're agents, and they would either approve or pass, and whatever they didn't approve or pass, it would just go to anybody else. They always had first dibs on canon films. The original yeah, Death Wish was a canon f- film? I love the original Death Wish. What's the original Death Wish? Uh, uh, it makes no, more sense that Death on. Wish, like, 2, 3, 4, and all the way to 50 yeah. are canon films. <laughs> okay. I don't think they do classic movies. Like, okay. Uh, <laughs> well, they also used to have the, uh, the rights to Spider-Man for a while. Yep, they were going to do the James Cameron Spider-Man, weren't they? 
Or no, they Dragon. they used the uh, the set to make a uh, what the hell was that again? Uh, Time Cop is it Time Cop Two? The one where they took the He Man's the He Man and the Masters of the Universe Two script and they turned it into Time Cop or whatever the hell. They <laughs> <were going. laughs> Maybe. No, they did a uh, Death Wish Two. They started with two. That makes more sense. That because they did Superman three and four, I think. Oh no, maybe just Superman four. They just did four. The Quest for Peace. Yeah, Captain America. Thank you, Omni. Omni Pool knows all the canon. Michael Curry, he's got to jump, spend time with the kids. Thanks, guys. Thanks again, Jess. Not sure why he's thinking just Jess. Uh, I'm the one that was I, earlier. I, I sent him something. That's why. Oh, okay. I, I thought he meant you doing something <laughs> wow. job hosting. <laughs> well, that's, well, that's true, but he didn't have to say that. Uh, you, you know. Um, so, yeah, I think it's that's actually a, a we're cutting we're cutting into an hour and a half. So, any more, you guys want to uh, answer a couple questions and then call it a night? Sure. Mm. Oh, dude, Canon Films did uh, Mannequin too. If you guys remember that movie. Oh God, the one about the medieval mannequin. Oh no, the Roman was it the Roman? No. no, it's about the uh, the department store mannequin. The no, candle I'm, life. That that's the first yeah, one. Yeah, the one I first one. Me. The second one right. had the guy from Herman's Head. Jesus, why do I know this? Herman's Head. <laughs> <laughs> There's a second mannequin. Yeah, it's called Mannequin Two, motherfucker. You just said it was. <laughs> oh no, I was talking about Mannequin, the first one. Oh, they did the first one. Yeah, there's a second yeah. mannequin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any questions in the chat for any of these uh, canon, canon, nerds. canon nerds? This one sounds awesome. Life Force, Naked Space Vampires. That was oh, Toby Hooper. That. I didn't know Toby Hooper directed this. What's oh, it called? Did a... uh, it's called Life Force. Naked Space Vampires? It's just called Life Force, but it deals with naked space vampires. They did Omar the first uh, John Claude Van Damme kickboxer too. Omar mm. Gabe, how and where to order graphic novels published by Hatchet Part Works? Their website only ships to UK. Oh man, I use um, in the past. I have used the uh, third party like Amazon sellers or eBay. That's the only place because they. He's right. They only ship to the UK. They have a lot of Transformers stuff that weren't that wasn't released here, and that was the way I got it. What? That sucks. Gabe, how's the Ultimate Fantastic Four six OHCs? Decent read slash run? Nope, nope, they're not that good. <laughs> no, they're pretty bad. Warren yeah. Ellison and Mark Miller wrote the first one, right? Uh, no, that was Bendis and Miller. Uh, Warren Ellis went, came on like the second. It would be like the second trade paperback, I think. I've got, like after 12. I've got them all here. Let's see. I only got this stuff because of the artwork. Who is the artist that made you buy it? Adam Kubert, and then uh, eventually, uh, I think Stuart Eminem took over. To, or maybe mm -hmm. Greg Land did it for a while. I don't he know. He did do it for a while. He did all the uh, hey, Marvel Greg, Zombies Greg stuff. Land can do okay every once in a while. That's a... But this is where I, Stuart Eminem really kind of like stood back out again. You know, actually, I don't mind Photoshop or Lightbox Greg Land if he's drawing like uh, dragons and half naked porn stars. As long as there's like uh, mythical creatures in the background, he's all right at it. As long as he gets those porn stars looking right for you. Uh, that's all I ask. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. So the first hardcover uh, has the Warren Ellis stuff in it. That's what I thought. So he did. So. He didn't start the series, though. It was no, Mark Miller and Bendis. Bendis. Yeah. You like the Bendis book. I didn't even know it. <laughs> I don't think I said I liked it. I said I owned it. <laughs> you liked it. Jess Hatchett is publishing Nikolai Dante in hardcover, and they are up to three. Uh, Sledge is always asking me to read Nikolai Dante. I have it on my wish list on Amazon. Maybe I'll get it for Father's Day. 
There Actually, I'm go. already getting a big new Lazy Boy chair for Father's Day. Ooh. So. I know. I'm excited. Nice. It's Jimmy Owens tomorrow. asking a good question. Are the Sandman spinoffs <laughs> worth reading? Um, Lucifer was solid. Uh, the the uh, Books of Magic is awesome. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think. Well, of course, Death. The two Death series was mm-hmm. were great. The High Cost of Living and the Time of Your Life. Those were both really good. Um, Dream and now Hunters, the- Endless Nights. Are those yeah, considered spinoffs? Or are they? I think they're part of the. They're part of the Sandman universe because they're con- they're collected in the Sandman hardcover or the absolutes. I love the Furies. Ooh, yeah, that's a good one too. By Mike Carey, yeah, I really Mike, love. The also, Furies. Mike Carey, who did Lucifer, and yeah, uh, Lucifer was good. Those are the ones that I definitely recommend. The ones, but they're about to come. They're about to drop some new titles. Remember with the gaming, whatever they're going to call that universe. Uh, burger books or whatever? No, Gaiman's got his own thing going on. Right? Gaiman's overseeing a whole bunch of he's, other he's over, Yeah, he's overseeing the DC Gaiman universe mm-hmm. thing. Like, we've got Books of Magic is coming back. Um, right. A couple of other books. We talked about it. I just don't ever watch our episodes. <laughs> hey, so here's something interesting. They just re- announced like the names of 9 out of the 13 episodes for Teen Titans. Oh hell yeah! So wait, you mean wait? The names of the pilots. Oh, okay. you're talking about the live action series. I'm sorry. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah. for a second, I thought you were talking about Young Justice, the anime. No, no, no. Uh, number one, Titans. Uh, episode one, episode two, Hawk and Dove. Episode three, Starfire. Episode four, Rachel. Episode five, which will probably be the only episode that I have interest in watching so far, uh, the Doom Patrol. Episode 6, The Messenger. Episode 7, Jason Todd. Episode 8, Angela. And episode 9, Donald Troy. I'm reserving judgment on that. Yeah. The-, um, the steel shots that I saw of Robin look wicked. And then... Did you I see don't- did you, did you see Well, Starfall? didn't they say that that was taken out of, like, in the rain? They weren't even... Sh- it wasn't, like... They weren't shooting. It was just, like, in between shots or something. Of course, they would say that. Yeah, it was like a, it was just like an overcoat they gave her and all this stuff. Yeah, it looks her. Yeah, well, I'm not gonna do it here, but she looks <laughs> doesn't look the part at all. So, Luis, do you think the whole Mignola verse will be printed in omnibus edition? It seems they are doing that with all the canon belt Hellboy stuff. Bellboy. I know it's uh, autocorrect. Okay. Bellboy. Uh, yeah, yeah, I. It, I Dark Horse is pretty good with that. In fact, I think Dark Horse, once they commit to printing a line of books, whether it's omnibuses or hardcovers, they finish that shit. So, yeah, I, I can imagine everything pretty much getting the omnibus treatment pretty soon. Actual hardcover omnibuses? Because they got those softcover ones coming out. Yeah, softcover ones. That sucks. I wish those things were hardcovers. <sighs> Doomed Patrol will debut on Titans, then be getting their own series. Oh, I can kind of already see a lot of this. I need to see Young Justice, dude. That new Young Justice Outsiders is going to be awesome. I hope to God. I still need to watch those first two seasons. They're pretty solid. I really oh, like them. Oh, dude, you're missing <laughs> out, bro. You are <laughs> fucking up. They're like busting a nut over there. Oh, so <laughs> Does Speedy get addicted to drugs? Yes. Okay, I'm in. Okay. Characters do die by the end of season two. They're, really? Yeah, it's pretty solid. It's a good. My, uh, I watched it with my oldest daughter, and she, we were both just as pissed when we found out there was no season three. <laughs> we were like, "What?" It ends on a cliffhanger, like hard. Wait, wait, wait! wait. I'm gonna yeah. take a, sh- a shot in the dark and say Superboy dies because he does in the Jeff John series. Does he now? <laughs> I don't know. I can't. No, remember. I don't think so, but. But he, they do get into that whole uh, Lex Luthor being part of That's his right, DNA yeah, kind of part of his stuff. DNA. It's a great show. Yeah. The only thing that I hated about it, because I like Blue Beetle a lot. I love that character. But on Young Justice, every other word out of his mouth was essay. <laughs> it was like this total terrible Hispanic like stereotype character yeah. where – there's this part where you, they have like a, uh, a bird's eye view of his neighborhood and all the houses are nice and his is like this shitty crack house with no roof. <laughs> you, don't, you don't know how much that shit pissed me off while reading Karen Gillan's Young Avengers. 
Chico, that Chico shit. Every time, um, oh, the America, you know, America Chavez yeah. will say that shit. I cringed. It pissed <laughs> me the fuck off so much. Is she, is she Puerto Rican? She is, which pissed me off even more. Yeah, but she's from like the different barrio than you are. Oh, like, <laughs> I'm from Puerto Rican of a fucking area. Is it kids? Nobody in my fucking neighborhood. Well, uh, I I get it, guys. I get it. Like. Uh, escape from LA, like the the bad guy was from Peru, and I'm like, none of that looks like Peru. I get it. I get it. Oh god, that pissed me off so much while reading that shit. I was like, really, Karen Gillan? Okay. Mm. Any I other mean, questions? We call what, what's going on, Jess? Omar, are you familiar with Don Lawrence? Am I familiar with who? I'm sorry. Don, Don Lawrence. If not, look up his art on Storm and Trigon Empire. No, I'm not. But I'm going to do that now. I'm sorry, Luis. I was cutting you off, man. No, oh, no. It's fine. It's a trap. What? Yeah. <laughs> Doomfellow's right. The white man got nothing to say here. I've tapped out of that part of this conversation. <laughs> Did you see Trading Places and Dan Aykroyd? I didn't particularly <laughs> care for Dan Aykroyd's portrayal in that. Stop That's it, rich white man. <laughs> that new season of Fixer Upper looks really cool. <laughs> <laughs> they got a great mortgage on that house in House Hunters. Four <laughs> percent. Flip or flop. I enjoy the yeah. young white woman in that. <laughs> <laughs> Luis, did you pick up Black Panther 4K? I'm getting it tomorrow. After I get out of work. Getting it tomorrow. Well, that's right. That that came that came out tomorrow. It comes yeah, out tomorrow. the Blu-ray. The Blu-ray comes out tomorrow, as does the uh, Gladi- Gladiator 4K. Has anyone? I remember this movie. Has anyone seen the bootleg of Roger Corman's Fantastic Four? Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. It's you. You could not go into a comic convention like in the night in the nineties, early aughts, without running into somebody that was selling that. Oh yeah, I I, it, I had a VHS copy of it. Man, the art in this is really cool. Tales from the Trigon Empire. So Don Lawrence is a force to be reckoned with as far as being an artist? Astro is in the box messing with Cosmo. Oh, Cosmo is in the box messing with Astro. It just looks really good. I really like the art. It's very uh, fantasy. Probably up your alley, too, uh, Jess. Oh, really? Yeah. Really, really. I'm just, I'm just flipping through pictures right now. It looks awesome. Look up his art on Storm. I do have two Storm trades. Cosmos in the box messing with Astro. No, Dave K. I never did see Goonies. What? what? <laughs> Damn it, Jess! <laughs> Come on, man. Thanos is in that movie. That's why he calls him one eye Willie in the Deadpool 2 trailer. Yeah. That's the treasure that we're looking for in Goonies. The one eye Willie's treasure. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's a classic. I, you know, what's funny, Gabe, um, what? is I forgot how much um, leeway they had in the 80s when it came to, like, strong language. Oh, yeah. Or, so I'm watching it with my daughter who was seven at the time and every time my wife walked by it was like shit asshole <laughs> and i'm and my wife's just looking at me and i'm like it's the only time they say it calm down <laughs> no it's <laughs> not <laughs> it's not at all and i forgot how some of these movies like today like you say fuck three times and you get well, an automatic like, R. I think Teen Wolf I was rewatching Teen Wolf and how homophobic some of this stuff was written. Oh yeah. Like the have you guys all seen Teen Wolf or you know the premise, right? I know the premise. All right, Michael you haven't J- seen Teen Wolf? Yeah, no. well, that, I can forgive him for that. That's Give okay. me a keg of beer, please. So there's the premise is, you know, Michael J. Fox is a werewolf and his best friend is Styles, who's the coolest fucking name. Anyway, so he's coming out to Styles <laughs> and he's like honor. he's like Hey man, I've got something to tell you. And he's like, "What? You're, what do you say?" Oh, and Styles is like, "What? You're not a homo, are you?" <laughs> and Michael J. Fox is like, "Oh God, no, no, I'm not a homo." <laughs> Jeez. I was like, "Man, you could not write dialogue like that in movies these no. days." No, no, you couldn't. <laughs> yeah, the '80s was pretty interesting time in cinema. 
It was a simpler time. Simpler, yeah. <laughs> it's out of cocaine. How is Jess so old yet never lived? Best uh, question. Best question of the night. Just because I haven't seen Goonies. <laughs> or Teen Wolf. Or Teen Wolf. <laughs> Somehow I've managed to live a rich and full life without seeing the Goonies and Teen Wolf. <laughs> Some, but they think I, there's an emptiness in my soul because of it. Uh, I kind of agree with them. Maybe that's what's missing. Is there like a way we can all get together on on like Google Hangouts and watch a movie with Jess? And make him watch these movies. You know I, he never will. I, I, t- yeah, that'd be a good way to force me to watch Goonies. The way he's got, he's Omar's, got a whole G- Omar's trying to force me to read The Crossing <laughs> in the chat. Yes, yes, you two should read The Crossing. It's wonderful. <laughs> they, uh, I mean, and Jess, I gave you Saving Private Ryan last week, so you should have watched that by now. Oh yeah, I got to go back and grab that code. Oh, and you also have to watch uh, Planet of the Apes too. Yeah, the original or the new one? New the ones. New ones. New ones are solid. Yeah, you know, the special effects aren't as good as the original ones, but they're pretty solid. What do you mean, monkey suits? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that. All right, almost two hours, guys. I'm gonna call it a night for me. You guys can keep on rocking it if you want to. Sounds like you're we're having fun. Well, let's talk about really quickly before we sign off InStockTrades.com, where you can get up to 50% off your collected editions, uh, free shipping on orders $50 or more in the United States, loyalty discounts, tack on an extra 2 or 3%, uh, along with sales. And every quarter, there's an Omnibros live discount now, which will add extra savings, bomb-proof packaging, and the most wonderful customer service on the planet. That's InStockTrades.com. Omar, where can they find you on the internet? Uh, they can find me on my channel, Near Mint Condition. It's a YouTube channel, so please come watch. Uh, and on the Facebook group with these fine gentlemen. Hmm. Luis, where can they find you? You can find me at Comics Guide 101 on Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff. And Gabe the Babe Infinity Watch. Uh, yeah, you can find me on Instagram, uh, Gabe Infinity Watch, and you can also find me in the Facebook groups of everybody else. So we'll see you there. And you can find me, Omnidog, at Omnidog's Vault on YouTube and on Instagram, Omnidog's underscore vault. So that does it for tonight. Thank you. A- awesome chat. All the awesome chat chatters and all our viewers, thank you very much. You were great as usual. If you could smash that like button for us. I don't know what that does, but I'm always told to say that, so please do it. Subscribe if you haven't. And we will see you in two days on the Wednesday show. Hey now. Hey now. Peace and love. Peace and love. Night, everybody. Good night.